Hello and welcome to the section 6.2 lecture today. Today we're talking about describing functions. So we've looked at sort of some, some basics of functions. We've looked at trying to see if a relationship is a function or not. Um, and now we're going to try to look at some characteristics that you can use to describe functions. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at what we have says, first we're going to investigate a constant rate of change. It says the U.S. Department of Agriculture defines heavy rain as rain that falls at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per hour. So again, like filling up a little controlled cylinder, 1.5 centimeters every hour. So if that's happening every hour, um, we know that we're, we're starting at zero rain. And we're going to go up 1.5 centimeters every hour. So at two hours, we're at three centimeters. Uh, give me one second. I see an issue coming up. Okay, we should be good to go now. So at two hours, we have three centimeters. At three hours, we have 4.5 centimeters. Not sure why my color changed there. At, at four hours, we have six centimeters. And at five hours, we have 7.5. So just every time increasing by a centimeter and a half. Okay. Uh, we want to plot those on the, uh, on the graph over here. And our scale works out pretty well. Well, I guess not. Um, I kind of do it backwards for what I'd want. But it looks like every line vertically is worth, uh, is worth one, while every line horizontally is worth a half which is just a kind of a bad setup because I have halves in my, in my Y values and I just have whole numbers in my X values, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. So at zero, it's one, or sorry, at zero, it's zero. At one, it's 1 1.5, which is halfway between one and two. I usually make those points small because that one's not a very good point for me to use if I wanted to create a straight line out of it. At two, it's going to be three, and that gives me a, a good little grid point there. Um, at three, it's 4.5, so again, that's halfway in between four and five. Sometimes that's tough to tell. At four, it's six. And at five, it's 7.5, so somewhere about there. I'm going to go ahead and use a straight line, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, you know, grab the edge of a piece of paper or a book anything you can. And I'm focusing on connecting the zero, zero to the two, three point. Okay, I'm focusing on put, putting my straight edge there if I were doing it by hand and then extending that through the graph. I'm actually gonna thin that out just a little bit. Maybe not. <laughs> Sometimes Thick lines don't really help us out very much. Okay. So we have that, and it's asking us how much rain falls in 3.5 hours. This is the great thing about being able to graph lines is I can tell what's going to happen in the future, and I can also tell what's going to happen at spots that I maybe didn't have plotted. I don't have 3.5 on my table. I'd have to do some relatively complex math to figure out what happens at 3.5. But using my graph, I have a, a line here at 3.5, so that's actually handy. Um, and it looks like it's just above five. So I'm looking at 3.5 on the X. What is my Y value? Okay. So it's a little bit above five, and it actually turns out that it's 5.25 centimeters. And it says to plot the point corresponding to that. Uh, that would be right there. What do you notice about all the points you plotted? Well, they are on a straight line. If I had to guess, I'm guessing your book wanted us to figure out this 5.25 using 
sort of a formula for this, but we kind of kind of jump past that a little bit. What's the total amount of rainfall? Uh, is the total amount of rainfall rain that falls? Sorry, a function of the number of hours the rain has been falling. Why or why not? Um, if we look at the graph of it, we would say that it is a function. We'll say yes, a function. And it passes, passes the vertical line test. Or more specifically, from what we talked about a couple for the last couple of days, um, for every for every input, there's exactly one output. Okay. Suppose you continue to plot points for times between uh, those in the table, such as 1.2 or 4.5. What can you say about the locations of these points? Well, 1.2. Somewhere almost halfway between these two lines. Um, might be somewhere close to two centimeters. Uh, but what can you say about all these points? So just generally thinking about any points in the middle here. Um, the one thing that we're, we're guaranteed of is that they're going to be on this line. Okay, So we'll say they will be on the line. Next thing we're looking at is to graph linear functions. We kind of already did that, but now they want to formalize it. It says here that the relationship you investigated in the previous activity can be represented by the equation y equals 1.5x because 1.5 was that constant rate of change. So it's like y equals mx plus b, where the y-intercept b is zero. Um, and that's where x is the time and y is the total amount of rain. The graph of the relationship is a line. That's what we call, and that's what we found. Um, and so we call it a linear equation. Linear meaning line, and equation is what we had. Um, then since there is exactly one value of y for each value of x, the relationship that we dealt with is a function. Um, and so since it's a function that gives us a line, we call it a linear function. And more specifically, because it's a non-vertical line. Vertical lines are actually not functions, but they're the only straight line that's not a function. <coughs> Uh, let's look at this example. So it's been completed for us. It says the temperature at dawn was 8 degrees Fahrenheit and steadily increased uh, 2 degrees Fahrenheit every hour. So the equation that we get, because we have a starting value of 8 and a constant rate of change 2, the equation that we get is y equals 2x plus 8. That's going to give the temperature y after x hours. State whether the relationship between time and temperature is proportional or non-proportional. Okay, so now we're looking at something that we actually looked at quite a while ago. Um, if we compare the function to the general linear equation y equals mx plus b, we see that the slope is 2, m is 2, and b, the y-intercept, is 8. And this is a very important difference, um, and really the only thing that, that I guess really matters. If the y-intercept is anything other than zero, then it's non-proportional. So the first example we did with the y equals 1.5x, that was proportional. This one would not be because it has a y-intercept of 8. The starting value is 8. So if we choose several values, and this is a very good skill to have, just pick values for x, 
figure out what the y values are. Okay, and we do that by plugging those x values into the equation and we get our y values. And of course, the, the, simp the simplified version of this would just look like this. We'd have a table, we'd have x's and y's, and we'd say at zero, it's eight. At two, it's 12. At four, it's 16. And at six, it's 20. Okay. And, and that's usually how you're going to see it. You're going to, um, this, this middle column is just kind of a work column. You can put it in there if you want to, if it helps you out, but it's just something where you can put the work that you're doing, uh, to maybe visualize it a little bit better. So then we graph the ordered pairs. You see at zero, it's eight at, at, uh, at 2, it's 12, at 4, it's 16, and at 6, it's 20 degrees. And we notice that it gives us a function, and it's non-proportional. Right? In order to be proportional, we talked about it a while ago, it has to be a straight line, and it has to go through the origin. This one's a straight line, but it doesn't go through the origin, so it's non-proportional. Um, state whether the relationship between x and y and y equals 0.5x is uh, proportional or non-proportional. Well, the sad thing is you can tell without graphing it. Okay, and that's, that's what they want us to do. They want us to tell without graphing it. If you're not sure whether this is going to go through the origin or not, then, then uh, pick some points. Graph it and see if it goes through the origin. On this one, since it's y equals 0.5x, and that's all, technically there's a plus zero there, that tells me that the y-intercept is zero, that means this will be proportional. Okay. And now to graph it, just like I said before, we're just gonna pick values for x and figure out what their y is. Now, I'm going to pick some smart values for x. And I'll, I'm going to kind of take that back. But I'm going to show why there are smart values by picking some not so smart values. An easy one that you can always plug in for x is 0. You can always go like 0, 1, 2, 3. But look at what your graph looks like. So it shows me 10 here and zero here, but there's only one, two, three, four, five lines that get me to 10. That means that every line is worth two. And that's actually the case in both directions. So with every line worth two, if I'm going to graph x equals 1, that's going to be somewhere in here. And not only that, but, well, let's, let's figure these ones out first. At 0, if I plug 0 into this, 0 times 1 half, or 0 0.5, is just 0. So I get this point here. At 1, 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So not only is every line worth 2, but I'm also trying to uh, I'm trying to graph one, one half, which is going to be like way down here somewhere, just totally in the middle, middle of, well, not even middle, but somewhere in the interior of my grid points here. So there's definitely some not so smart values that I can choose. Okay, even two, when I multiply two by one half, I get one. That's still not even a really smart value, right? Because at two. I get one. And that, I mean, that can work, but it's not great because I'm guessing where halfway is. So I'm going to pick, I'm, I'm definitely only going to pick even values for my x. So I might pick like four, six, and eight. But me personally, even though I, I, I plugged in two and got one, I don't take a whole lot of stock in that, in that location for graphing my line. I want to see at least one other grid point as, a, as an option here. 
Well, what happens if I plug in four? One half of four is two, and that's actually gonna give me a really nice point right there. Okay, now if I plug in six, one half of six is three. So again, I would be looking somewhere in the middle of these, uh, of these two grid points right here. So I don't really like that one either. I'm, not, I'm actually just not gonna graph it. But at eight, one half of eight is four. That's gonna give me a really nice grid point right here. So I'm gonna stick with those, really those three, the zero, zero, the four, two, and the, and the eight, four. And the beauty of graphing lines is you can graph them in both directions. So we get something that looks like that. And I'm actually going to extend it the other way. Okay, now if you're doing this on a piece of paper like you are, and you just put your straight edge on these three points, you can draw that line all the way through your graph at one um, with one step. Mine should always have arrows on the end. Okay. Moving on. The next thing we want to look at is determining whether uh, determining whether a function is linear. The linear equation in example one <clears throat> had the form y equals mx plus b. They had, uh, you know, they had y equals 2x plus 8 is what they're referring to. Uh, where m and b are real numbers, every equation in the form y equals mx plus b is a linear equation. So anytime we have y equals mx plus b, it's going to be a straight line. Uh, linear equations represent linear functions. There's really no difference between the two other than the equation is like a, 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 a specific item, you know, a specific relationship, and a function is more of like an idea. But, it, you know, for what we're doing, there really is no difference. Whether you say equation or function, um, they're about the same. Equations cannot be written, uh, equations that, that cannot be written in this form are not linear equations, and therefore they're not linear functions. So in this one, we have a square tile has a side length of x inches. The equation y equals x squared gives the area of that tile. So how, my, how many square cubes are going to fit in that tile? Uh, the, cubes is a bad, bad word. Um, how many little squares would fit in that tile. Determine whether the relationship between x and y is linear, and if so, is it proportional? So we look at some values, and we can do this. This is a skill that I would, I would push to you at any point in your math career. Be able to look at an equation pick some values for x and figure out what their y value is. It's a huge skill to have. It got me through a lot of even high school math. I, I didn't have fancy graphing calculators or things like GeoGebra. Um, I just didn't have those. So I, I just, I made tables. I made x, y tables. Um, and so when they pick one and they square it, they get one. Pick 2, 2 squared is 4, 3, 3 squared is 9, and 4, 4 squared is 16. When they graph that, we end up with a curve, okay? Because you, you would probably graph, you know, your 1, 1, your 2, 4, your uh, 3, 9, and your 4, 16. So the, the first thing that you start to see, and this is kind of tough because they've already graphed it, um, you might even plug in zero, and at zero you get zero. Zero times zero is zero. You might think that, well, this is like just a, a series of straight lines, but it actually develops a curve. Okay. So since it's a curve, it's not a line, so it's not linear, 
And since only a linear relationship can be proportional, it's also not proportional, even though it goes through zero, zero. Remember, we had two requirements for proportional, and that was number one, a straight line, and number two goes through the origin, but it has to meet both of those criteria. Okay. So it's not linear, not proportional. This one says a soda machine makes two thirds of a gallon of soda every minute. The total amount Y that the machine makes in X minutes is given by the equation Y equals two thirds X. So is this linear or nonlinear? What it comes down to is, is this a form of Y equals MX plus B? We noticed in the previous example it wasn't linear because the x was squared. Right? There's, there's nothing in this, in this y equals mx plus b that has a squared x in it. Okay. So can I write the equation that I have in y equals mx plus b? Well, I can. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 0. So that means that it's a straight line, and since the y-intercept is zero, that means it's proportional. Okay, so this is linear and proportional. Right. Now that we know it's linear and proportional, the first thing I know is that at zero, it's zero. <laughs> because when I plug in zero for X, I get zero. And then they sort of work to pick some smarter numbers again. Um, the idea behind picking smart numbers to plug in for X is I wanna pick multiples of the denominator. So we see this first value that they pick for X, they don't pick one, because one times two thirds would be two thirds, and that's tough to graph. But if I pick three, two-thirds times three is, uh, when, when I pick that, and I'm, and I'm looking at the math behind that, if we think of it as three over one, I see that my threes actually cancel out. All right, so three is canceling out. Two times one over one times one is two. Let's jump over to nine and let's see what happens when we plug in nine. Two thirds times nine, or nine over one. My three and nine do still cancel out. I get a one below and a three up above. And so two times three is six, one times one is one. So we get six there. Now you could plug in four for y, and for that, you'd get something that looks like this. 4 equals 2 thirds x. And you could work on solving for x, but I'm going to push you to think a little bit easier. If the, the bottom goes 0, 2, 4, 6, and the top goes 0, 3, blank, 9, what do you think goes in the top? I would push you to think that the bottom's going up by twos, and the top right here goes up by three, and then by six. So we're missing one in the middle for the top to go up by threes. So that's six is four. So to graph this, at three I get two. At six I get four. And at nine, I get six. So I get a graph that looks like this. Which we could have found from our earlier views on graphing of plot the y-intercept, and then go up to and over three, I get the same thing, okay? 
The last thing that we need today is we need a code word. And for us today, it's going to be linear. I believe we've probably had that before, but linear will be our code word. Have a good day, and we will see you in class.